عن أمير المؤمنين أبي حفص عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى فمن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة ينكحها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه رواه البخاري ومسلم On the authority of the commander of the faithful Abu Hafs Umar ibn al-Khattab May Allah be pleased with him who said I heard the messenger of Allah the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him say actions are but by intention and every man shall have but that which he intended thus he whose migration was for Allah and his messenger his migration was for Allah and his messenger and he whose migration was to achieve some worldly benefit or to take some woman in marriage his migration was for that for which he migrated it was related by al-bukhari and muslim we learn from this hadith one actions are not acceptable without sincere intentions two every man is rewarded in accordance with his intention Three, actions should be devotedly performed for the sake of Allah. Four, all people will be resurrected on the day of judgment and brought to account according to their intentions. وعن عمر رضي الله عنه أيضا قال بينما نحن جلوس عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم إذ طلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرفه منا أحد حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسند ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كفيه على فخذيه وقال يا محمد أخبرني عن الإسلام فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الإسلام أن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت إن استطعت إليه سبيلا قال صدقت فعجبنا له يسأله ويصدقه قال فأخبرني عن الإيمان قال أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر وتؤمن بالقدر خيره وشره قال صدقت قال فأخبرني عن الإحسان قال أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك قال فأخبرني عن الساعة قال ما المسؤول عنها بأعلم من السائل قال فأخبرني عن أماراتها قال أن تلد الأمة ربتها وأن ترى الحفاة العراة العالة رعاء الشاء يتطاولون في البنيان ثم انطلق فلبثت مليا ثم قال يا عمر أتدري من السائل قلت الله ورسوله أعلم قال فإنه جبريل أتاكم يعلمكم دينكم رواه مسلم Also on the authority of Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, 
One day, while we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, there appeared before us a man whose clothes were exceedingly white and whose hair was exceedingly black. No signs of journeying were to be seen on him, and none of us knew him. He walked up and sat down by the Prophet, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, resting his knees against his, and placing the palms of his hands on his thighs, he said, O Muhammad, tell me about Islam. The Messenger of Allah, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, said, Islam is to testify that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, to perform the prayers, to pay the zakat, to fast in Ramadan, and to make the pilgrimage to the house if you are able to do so. He said, You have spoken rightly. And we were amazed at him, asking him and saying that he had spoken rightly. He said, Then tell me about a man. He said, It is to believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the last day, and to believe in divine destiny, both the good and the evil thereof. He said, You have spoken rightly. He said, Then tell me about Ihsan. He said, It is to worship Allah as though you are seeing Him. And while you see Him, not yet truly, He sees you. He said, Then tell me about the hour. He said, The one questioned about it knows no better than the questioner. He said, Then tell me about its signs. He said, That the slave girl will give birth to her mistress, and that you will see the barefooted, naked, destitute herdsmen competing in constructing lofty buildings. Then he took himself off, and I stayed for a time. Then he said, O oh, Omar, do you know who the questioner was? I said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, It was Gabriel who came to you to teach you your religion. It was related by Muslim. We learn from this hadith 1. Man should observe purity of his body and clothes, especially in meetings and gatherings. 2. A newcomer should not enter the gathering without taking the permission of the one who is in charge. He should salute those present. 3. One should not ask about trivialities or improper matters. 4. If the person who is asked does not know the answer, there is no blame on him if he says, I do not know. عن أبي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنهما قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول بني الإسلام على خمس شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا رسول الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وحج البيت وصوم رمضان رواه البخاري ومسلم On the authority of Abu Abdurrahman Abdullah the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with them both, who said, 
I heard the Messenger of Allah, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, say, Islam has been built on five pillars, testifying that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, performing the prayers, paying the zakat, making the pilgrimage to the house, and fasting in Ramadan. It was related by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. We learn from this hadith 1. Observing and performing the daily prayers regularly is a must for Muslims who want to be granted the unlimited mercy of Allah. 2. Paying zakah is a fad ain, individual duty upon every Muslim. 3. Performing pilgrimage is a fad ain that must be fulfilled by every Muslim who can afford it. 4. Fasting during the month of Ramadan is a fad ain that must be fulfilled by those Muslims who are asked to. عن أبي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو الصادق المصدوق إن أحدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوما نطفة ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك فينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقي أو سعيد فوالله الذي لا إله غيره إن أحدكم لا يعمل بعمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيدخلها وإن أحدكم لا يعمل بعمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها رواه البخاري ومسلم On the authority of Abu Abdurrahman Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, The Messenger of Allah, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, and he is the truthful, the believed, narrated to us. Verily, the creation of each one of you is brought together in his mother's belly for forty days in the form of seed. Then he is a clot of blood for a like period then a morsel of flesh for a like period. Then there is sent to him the angel who blows the breath of life into him and who is commanded about four matters, to write down his means of livelihood, his lifespan, his actions, and whether happy or unhappy. By Allah, other than whom there is no God, verily one of you behaves like the people of paradise, until there is but an arm's length between him and it and that which has been written overtakes him, and so he behaves like the people of hellfire, and thus he enters it. And one of you behaves like the people of hellfire, until there is but an arm's length between him and it. And that which has been written overtakes him, and so he behaves like the people of paradise, and thus he enters it. It was related by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. We learn from this hadith 1. Allah the Almighty knows what the fate of each one of us is before we are born. 2. It is the will of Allah 
that decides on what we finally achieve, not our good or bad deeds. 3. Though all things are predestined, people are given freedom of choice between a good thing and a bad one. 4. To be a good Muslim, one must obey the Creator with absolute faith and readiness to accept whatever befalls him without questioning. 5. No one is ever sure of his own salvation and admission into paradise. وعن أم المؤمنين أم عبد الله عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد رواه البخاري ومسلم وفي رواية لمسلم من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد On the authority of the mother of the faithful Um Abdullah Aisha May Allah be pleased of her Who said The messenger of Allah May the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him Said He who innovates something in this matter of ours That is not of it Will have it rejected it was related by al-Bukhari and Muslim. In one version by Muslim it reads, He who does an act which our matter is not in agreement with will have it rejected. We learn from this hadith. 1. Every action not sanctioned by Allah and his messenger is absolutely rejected. 2. Warning against legally rejected innovations and novelties in religious matters. 3. Urging Muslims to stick tightly to their religion. 4. The religion of Islam is a complete and perfect one that needs no additions, whatever, or extra innovations. عن أبي عبد الله النعمان بن بشير رضي الله عنهما قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن الحلال بين وإن الحرام بين وبينهما أمور مشتبهات لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس فمن اتقى الشبهات فقد استبرأ لدينه وعرضه ومن وقع في الشبهات وقع في الحرام كالراعي يرعى حول الحمى يوشك أن يرتع فيه ألا وإن لكل ملك حما ألا وإن حما الله محارمه ألا وإن في الجسد مطغة إذا صلحت صلح الجسد كله وإذا فسدت فسد الجسد كله ألا وهي القلب رواه البخاري ومسلم On the authority of Abu Abdullah and Nu'man, the son of Bashir, may Allah be pleased of them both, who said, I heard the messenger of Allah, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, say, that which is lawful is plain, and that which is unlawful is plain, and between the two of them are doubtful matters about which not many people know. Thus, he who avoids doubtful matters clears himself in regard to his religion and his honour, but he who falls into doubtful matters falls into that which is unlawful, like the shepherd who pastures around a sanctuary 
all but grazing therein. Truly every king has a sanctuary, and truly Allah's sanctuary is his prohibitions. Truly in the body there is a morsel of flesh, which, if it be whole, all the body is whole, and which, if it be diseased, all of it is diseased. Truly it is the heart. It was related by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. We learn from this hadith, 1. We must be distantly away from matters leading to prohibited things. 2. A good Muslim must avoid doubtful things, that their religious status is not clear. 3. To be a good Muslim, one must avoid minor sins, for they may lead to major ones. 4. Well gains fill one's heart with divine light and direct him to well-doing. 5. Ill gains darken one's heart and direct him to wrongdoing. وعن أبي رقية تميم بن أوس الداري رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الدين النصيحة قلنا لمن قال لله ولكتابه ولرسوله ولأئمة المسلمين وعامتهم رواه مسلم Seventh hadith On the authority of Abu Rukaya Tamim ibn Aus Ad-Dari May Allah be pleased of him that the Prophet, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, said, Religion is sincerity. We said, To whom? He said, To Allah and his book, and his messenger, and to the leaders of the Muslims and their common folk. It was related by a Muslim. We learn from this hadith. 1. The religion of Islam is based on sincerity. 2. No sincerity, no religion. 3. Sincerity to Allah means to do all what is deserved by Him, i.e. to believe in Him, His existence, attributes, along with obeying and loving Him, etc. 4. Sincerity to His book is to believe in it and to follow its judgments and rules, along with reciting its verses and getting to have full and accurate understanding of their meaning. 5. Sincerity to his messenger is to believe in all that he was sent down with and to stick firmly to it. 6. Sincerity to Muslim leaders is to assist them in serving the cause of justice and to obey them in all other than unlawful matters. 7. Sincerity to Muslim community is to guide and direct the people to all that may help them in matters of religion and these pertaining to this present life. وعن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أمرت أن أقاتل الناس حتى يشهدوا أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله ويقيم الصلاة ويؤت الزكاة فإذا فعلوا ذلك أعصموا مني دماءهم وأموالهم إلا بحق الإسلام وحسابهم على الله رواه البخاري ومسلم On the authority of the son of Umar, may Allah be pleased with them both, that the Messenger of Allah, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, said, I have been ordered to fight against people, until they testify that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, and until they perform the prayers, 
and pay the zakat. And if they do so, they will have gained protection from me for their lives and property, unless they do acts that are punishable in accordance with Islam, and their reckoning will be with Allah the Almighty. It was related by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. عن أبي هريرة عبد الرحمن بن صخر رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما نهيتكم عنه فاجتنبوه وما أمرتكم به فأتوا منه ما استطعتم فإنما أهلك الذين من قبلكم كثرة مسائلهم واختلافهم على أنبيائهم رواه البخاري ومسلم Ninth Hadith On the authority of Abu Huraira Abdurrahman ibn Sakhir May Allah be pleased with him, who said, I heard the Messenger of Allah, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, say, What I have forbidden to you, avoid. What I have ordered you to do, do as much of it as you can. It was only their excessive questioning and their disagreeing with their prophets that destroyed those who were before you. It was related by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. We learn from this hadith, 1. One should avoid all that is prohibited by the Prophet, peace be upon him. 2. We must follow the Prophet, peace be upon him, in everything he has commanded us to do. 3. One should try his best in doing what he has commanded to do. 4. One is forbidden to ask unnecessary questions. 5. Allah doesn't burden any person with anything save that he can afford. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله تعالى طيب لا يقبل إلا طيبا وإن الله أمر المؤمنين بما أمر به المرسلين فقال يا أيها الرسل كلوا من الطيبات واعملوا صالحا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم ثم ذكر الرجل يطيل الصفر أشعث أغبر يمد يديه إلى السماء يا رب يا رب ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه حرام وغذي بالحرام فأنا يستجاب له رواه مسلم On the authority of Abu Huraira may Allah be pleased with him who said the messenger of Allah may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him said Allah the Almighty is good and accepts only that which is good. Allah has commanded the faithful to do that which he commanded the messengers. And the Almighty has said, O ye messengers, eat of the good things and do right. And Allah the Almighty has said, O ye who believe, eat the good things wherewith we have provided you. Then he mentioned the case of a man who having journeyed far is dishevelled and dusty 
and who spreads out his hands to the sky, saying, O Lord, O Lord, while his food is unlawful, his drink unlawful, his clothing unlawful, and he is nourished unlawfully. So how can he be answered? It was related by Muslim. We learn from this hadith, 1. Allah the Almighty is good and accepts only that which is good. 2. Supplication should be pure and should emanate from that which is pure. 3. Islam enjoins Muslims to earn their living from lawful sources. 4. Supplications of earner of the unlawful are not answered. 5. Supplications of the humble are answered. 6. Supplications of the one who is on travel is answered.